Hello, and welcome to Least Queries Accountants Angle, a podcast where our experts answer your most burning questions regarding accounting topics and upcoming changes. I'm your host for the day, Jake Jones, controller here at Least Query, and I'm joined by our senior accountant, Jordan Hamm. Jordan and myself will be talking about our personal experience with the adoption and implementation of ASC 842 here at Least Query. Even though we have the best lease accounting software in the market, as referenced by G2's uh, grid report, we still had a lot of work to do to get the new standard implemented. That's right. So background, Lease Query has been around since 2011. However, we didn't enter into our first lease as a company until July of 2018 for office space here in Dunwoody, Georgia. We adopted 842 effective 1-1-2019. At the time of adoption, we had leased office space in Dunwoody and Tipton, Georgia. And we also moved into a larger office space in Dunwoody in 2019 and ended up subleasing our orig original space also, and we also held an office in Alabama from 2020 to 2021. In 2021 and in 2022, we added a few financing leases as well for computers. So during my time at Cherry Becker, prior to joining the lease query, I worked through a few 842 implementations with public companies that had to adopt back in 2018. Uh, you know, Jordan, did you have any experience with 842 prior to joining lease query? Lease Courier was actually my first experience working on 842 implementation, so it was a really great learning experience for me. I know as we went through the process, you know, Jordan put in most of the legwork on accumulating the agreements and working with our implementation team to be sure that we got all of the lease information into the Lease Query software. Looking back, what would you say were some of the biggest challenges you faced as part of the adoption? Some of the biggest challenges were gathering historical data and understanding the key differences between 840 and 842 standards. However, our implementation team provided a lot of insight throughout the process, making sure we had a good understanding of the affected balance sheet accounts and monthly lease entries. Yes, yeah. I mean, during the process, we worked with a number of our in-house experts on the adoption. I mean, personally, I spent a, a number of hours with our technical resources evaluating some of the things in our agreements, the lease incentives, um, some impairment around the time of COVID, uh, discount rates, uh, you know, Jordan, how would you say, you know, working with our internal team during the implementation process, like what did you learn um, from that? Even though it was important for me to have a good understanding of our lease agreements, our implementation team assisted by extracting important lease provisions and payment terms. Throughout our lease entry service, they expedited the process of getting our leases entered into the software for our review. Yeah, I mean, that, that saved us a lot of time. I being able to utilize our lease entry team's expertise as far as like, you know, what lease provisions are important, what to pull out um, to, to put into the software, um, you know, being familiar with the format of leases, I think probably would have taken me and you double or triple the time, just since we're not as familiar with, with how those things are written and reading them every day like they are. Uh, since you have to record the entries every month, how would you say the adoption of 842 and the lease query software has really impacted your role and you know, monthly close to go ahead and get those into our NetSuite system? Using lease query has made generating the monthly lease entries a quick process. Once the entries are posted, it is easy to reconcile our general ledger balances to the amortization schedules that lease query provides. It has really improved our month and close process. Yeah, I agree. And I also have to mention how easy it is to get the disclosures for your financial statements out of the software. Uh, you know, during my time working with those public companies, I saw how much it was a headache for them to try to get their disclosures together, you know, especially if they were doing all of their lease, uh, lease accounting in Excel. Uh, so just having a button you can push that, you know, you're sure it's going to generate all of the, the correct required disclosures from the leases you have in the system is definitely uh, pretty convenient. Looking back at the transition now, Jordan, I mean, would you recommend any changes uh, to the way we did the adoption process or for companies out there that are either currently adopting or, you know, still may not even have thought about actually adopting 842? I would say keeping track of important lease information and documents is imperative when you begin the process of impl implementing 842. Having a centralized place to store information really helped us. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And for me, I think that, you know, drafting your adoption memo early on uh, can also help putting a pen to paper and thinking through the practical expedience and the other areas of the standard, uh, you know, can be useful for adoption. I think it makes you kind of slow down, think through some of the different aspects before you go and just start dropping data into the system and generating reports. So 
that's something I would definitely recommend not letting it be an, an afterthought and something that you may maybe don't even put together until your auditors come out and ask for it. So, well, Jordan, thanks so much for joining today. Thanks for having me. And don't forget to subscribe to Lease Free's podcast, The Accountant's Angle, to get new episodes directly to your inbox. And you can find us on Spotify and at leasefree.com. Thank you.